Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the first episode of 2020 and we hope you had a great Christmas and we want to wish you all a happy and creative new year. And of course, we can help you with the creative part. So head over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how. And we're actually recording this a few days before Christmas, so we're not quite there yet, are we, Tara? Thanks to everyone who's been sharing their work with us on social media. It always amazes me that so many of you manage to keep up with the challenges over Christmas. So uh, hats off to you. And it's always just so hard to pick things out because there's so many people now on our Facebook group and so much work to look at. But I do want to give a special mention to Gabriella Pop, who, by the time this episode airs, will have completed the Kick 365 Challenge. I think as we record this, she is now on day 352. It's amazing, isn't it? I know. I'm so impressed that she made it because, you know, that challenge takes real commitment. And if you want to know what that challenge is, by the way, it's it's doing a, one sketch every day for 365 days. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you had to think about that, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Blame That's the jet why it's lag called with... kick, three, kick, three, six. kick 365. Yeah. I can't say either. <laughs> And what she's been doing is she's been doing a self-portrait every day for a whole year. And um, she's been tying them in to kind of suit the monthly challenges and the prompts. So I was thinking you could actually almost say that she's completed 13 challenges in one year, couldn't you? Yeah, she has. Yeah. Fantastic. So I, I reckon Gabriella gets a gold star, right? Yep, I think so too. And I also want to mention John Munro. And he has just re- released re-released he's just released his children's book the wonderful world of weens and that is available on amazon so a huge congratulations to john so what about you tara what's caught your eye well first of all i think that's amazing because john has only just released another book so he's done two in the space of what like a month or two amazing isn't it and so perhaps productive he can, perhaps he can give us some um some some useful tips we've had a book that's been written and ready to publish for a while except it's just the illustrations <laughs> and who's doing those sandra i know i know yeah yes. so uh um well, hopefully that'll be us next year releasing our book um anyway yes back to you what, what, what caught your eye yeah, I've really enjoyed the work created by Margaret Gray for Doodle in December. She's created some really beautiful, striking black and white drawings. And she's put poetry with some of those as well that she's written. And then I love the work of Rusilla Moodley. She creates these really lovely, colourful doodles. And you can tell at a glance that they're hers. You just know immediately. Yeah. And then also Carol Whitmore. She's created some fantastic doodles. And I love the one she did to de- depict stress. It was kind of this weird creature thing. Really, really ah. good. <laughs> yeah. Drawing your feelings. That's um, always interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, anyway, what is new with you? Even though I know because you blasted it everywhere on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, just a quick heads up to everyone that if you hear me start snoring midway through this episode, it's not because I'm bored. It's because I only got back from Thailand four days ago, was it? And there is a seven hour time difference. So I'm still a bit jet lagged. Um, And also because I've been away, I haven't really got much to share because... Unless you want to see my white bum. <laughs> no, no, thanks. God. Maybe you could put a picture of it on the show notes. <laughs> Mind you, after eating all of that Thai food, there probably wouldn't be any room for the notes. <laughs> I had um, hoped to get some sketching done while I was in Thailand. In fact, I was going to do, I was planning to do a lot. But, you know, when, when I went to Cuba last, I think it was January, we I did loads. I did loads of sketching. But I'll tell you what, the humidity in Thailand is so intense that just holding a pencil was difficult because everything's damp and slippy all the time. And even the paper feels damp. Um, And the weather was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. But, of course, staring at a white page and having white 
you know, the blinding sun bounce back into your eyeballs. It's just not comfortable. So it was just never going to happen. Um, but I'm back now, so I'm looking forward to getting back to the painting that I've got on the go at the moment, which I started before I left. And to be honest, it's, it's nearly finished. Um, I just didn't get a time to finish it before I went. But it's Is this the, the tri- bendy bottle that we went yeah. to? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bendy? What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not saying that again. No, no. Anyone who doesn't know what we're on about, listen to... Oh, what episode was it? Oh, I'm not one, sure. One or two episodes ago. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a tricky time of year, though, isn't it? Because Christmas and everything is completely bonkers. So I don't know if I'm going to get back to the painting for another few days. But, it, you know, it's not long to go now. But it was weird. I've got to say this because in Thailand, there wasn't so much as a whiff of Christmas anywhere. And no Christmas Do they trees. celebrate Christmas? I think because people, some of the people we met, um, we met over there had been to Bangkok first and they said it, Bangkok was absolutely Christmas mad. But where we were, there, there wasn't any decorations, there was no mention of it, no whiff of it, not, no, abs- absolutely nothing. And um, we left the UK at the very end of November, so it wasn't overly Christmassy at that point. Um, but when we got back, I popped into Tesco for a couple of pints of milk And I'll tell you what, it was like walking into Santa's Grotto. So it was a bit of a shock to go from absolutely nothing to Christmas music being blasted in my ear. And and it was like the whole of East Sussex was in one shop. I couldn't believe it. But um, yeah, Yeah. I'm sure it'll be another week before I can get back to my painting. But there's not far to go. So I reckon it should be done by the end of January. Anyway, what about you? What is new with you? Well, not a lot compared to you. I, I think I've just been ankle deep in mud because oh. our weather has been so rubbish while you've been away we've just had tons and tons of rain yeah. so i've been out walking the dogs slipping around and stuff but i've also been dipping in a bit to the doodling challenge that we've got on which is um i keep forgetting what it's called how bad is that is it doodling <laughs> december or is yes. it doodling december <laughs> um so yeah so i've been dipping in out of that just because it's it's so fun there's no pressure is there when you're doodling it's like if you do a bad drawing you call it a doodle that's what, exactly. what I do anyway. Uh, and also, I signed up for a few art courses and a few online art courses, which were on offer Black Friday. Always, oh, always yeah. Always really dull, isn't it, Black Friday? Yeah. So, yeah, so I signed up for a sketchbook school one on finding your style. Oh, brilliant. A domestica one and also a sketchy one. So, haven't been through them all yet, but uh, I might be experimenting with those for something we've got coming up next year, but we'll wait and see and talk about that then shall we yeah i think so yeah. and also i just want to give a thank you to our most recent kofi supporters we've got anonymous so you know who you are we've got anastasia could rush i can't say this one anastasia could rush kina <laughs> nell cummins and helen gain gaitanis um yes and we we've got coffees coming up so, well we've probably done them by actually by the time this airs but, uh, of course, we did that lovely one where I pretended to be you for two of those. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Oh, do you think that? Oh, no, they probably wouldn't have noticed, would they? No. No, that was oh. the whole point. Sorry. Yes. <gasps> anyway, yes. So when what Tara's trying to say is basically whenever anybody um, supports us on Kofi, we will give you a frothy coffee moustache. Oh, well, Kofi. No, we haven't told people what Kofi is. Oh. Oh, you better do that then. Yeah, so Kofi is a place, which is K-O-F-I, where you can support us by making a small donation to buy us a coffee, which helps buy things like podcast hosting, web hosting, that sort of thing, and props for our, our videos. So, yeah, if you want to support us, just um, go over to our website. There's a link over there. And thank you for people who have done so, so far. Yeah, thank you. So today we are talking about the power of continuous practice. And I think that most of the people who joined Kicking the Creators at the start and have been joining in with the challenges ever since will be able to see how much they've improved by building a creative habit. So if you haven't joined us yet and you want to improve your skills, then I think now is a great time to start beginning of the year and all that. Um, I think any amount of practice is great, but like anything, regularity, I think, is the key. Um, If you look at it like going to the gym, Going once or twice a week, well, it might be good for you, but you're not going to see any results um, for, you know, anywhere near as quickly as you would by going several times a week. So basically, the more you do it, the quicker the results. 
Yeah, and I think if you build in that time regularly, it begins to be eventually, <laughs> eventually becomes a habit, which is the key to improving. So you don't think about how to do it; you just do it. It's like when I get out, I know I've got to take my dog for a walk. There's no question of it. It's that's just what I do, and that's how you know drawing or creating or whatever you do becomes and and all you have to do is you have to build in things like having that always having that notebook by your side when you're sitting watching tv at night and so it's much more natural to just grab it and start drawing it's the same if you if you set aside a certain time every day you know that is your time like you used to do your morning sketching didn't you sandra Mm, i still do do you i thought you'd lapsed a little bit with that i lapsed a bit towards the end of the year yeah and obviously being away and stuff but no I still I still whenever I can I still do I used to do it every morning um before work I'd go into work an hour early just to get some sketching done um more recently obviously because of our video making and things like that I've been putting some time you know for that but yeah no I'm trying to get back into that habit again um and I have been even like yesterday I was out there sketching first thing and uh yeah, I'm planning to get back into that daily habit next year. I mean, you well, can this also... year now. Yeah, I'm saying true. next year, but what, when this is airs, it'll be this year. I mean, you can also build in time for like lunch breaks and stuff mm. as well, can't you? And I went to a business conference. How posh does that sound? A business conference? I oh, know. I went with my friend Lisa about a month or so ago and I actually took a sketchbook with me, which is something I would never have done previously. Mm. I just wouldn't have considered it. No. And there wasn't, to be honest, there wasn't that much time for drawing Um because it felt a bit uncomfortable. You couldn't really do it while they were talking. It felt a bit uncomfortable. I did do at the end when I got a bit bored. But I did sit and do a sketch while Lisa was in the coffee queue. Poor old Lisa. She's in the coffee queue. I'm sitting sketching. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, I found were myself... Were you sketching the queue? Yeah, I was. Because uh, queues are so good, aren't they? And, and did Lisa know? Was she kind? Yeah, no, Lisa didn't mind. No, she but was, was, she, was she kind? Did she stand nice and still for you? <laughs> no, I wasn't drawing Lisa, actually. I was drawing two women a bit further down in the queue. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> um, I think one of them clocked me, but she didn't seem to mind, so I carried on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a perfect time, isn't it? And it's, it's get, snatching those little bits of time, isn't it? That um, And little moments, like you say, having a, a book with you all the time is is key, I think. Yeah. I was, you know, I was saying about I want to get into the habit again this yeah. year. Because I, I did every day last year um well not every day but certainly the first six months of the year I was out there every single morning and yeah. I, I have a kind of idea in my head of of you know getting back into that daily habit of having to do it not having to do it but building that habit yeah and I'm not sure if I want to say it or not because then I'm accountable <laughs> but I have a, I come have on a... then yeah because <laughs> well, that could be part of what we were talking about before we Mm, well i i have been thinking about this for some time and it's it's not something i'm gonna take on lightly if i do it because i don't want to say i'm gonna do it and then it doesn't happen if i say i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it um so i'm thinking of doing the key the kick 365 (gasps) challenge i know (laughs) i know and i wasn't gonna say oh you when you you know when you said you know what's new with me i nearly said it then yeah and i thought if i say it (laughs) <laughs> on this got podcast i've got to do it so i'm still at that point at the moment between you know i'm I'm sort of at that point where i'm like yes i am but i'm not gonna do hundred... kick kick 182 whatever <laughs> half is aren't you it's a, the thing is it's a it is a commitment it is yeah because there's you know i know we always saying you know a challenge don't worry too much you know as long as you're doing more than you would normally but i think when you're taking on something like Kick 365, I think that the point is you do it 365 days, don't you? Otherwise, yes. you know, and I like Gabriella, she hasn't missed she hasn't missed a day, I don't think. Um, well, I know she hasn't. She might have done a couple that one day and none the next, maybe. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things I think, oh, if I do that, then I I know I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. But that's like the thing I was thinking about committing myself to for February that I told mm, you about yeah. and and recording all of it. Yeah. It's the same, isn't it? I don't know where to admit that on air either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could just say that me and Tara are both thinking of doing something. You we can't haven't decided yourself yet. out now. You can't bleep <laughs> so, out. Kick 365. I've heard well, it. 
but I haven't I haven't said I'm doing it yet. Okay. I said I'm thinking okay. of doing it. Okay. So I think that next time we air an episode, I will have a yes or a no, and I would have either started it or not. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So a great way of getting uh, in regular practice is to set yourself a challenge or maybe join in with, with one of ours um, to practice every day for a month. And obviously a month is a lot easier than, you know, 365 days. So it's it's really not so much of an undertaking. But by drawing every day for a month, you will start seeing results a lot more quickly than you would if you just squeeze in a little bit of drawing, you know, here and there. And consistency is the key, I think. Yeah, I'm, I think it's definitely better to spend a little bit of time every day rather than, you know, one big chunk. So say you're going to say you're going to do eight hours at the weekend. Well, don't do that. Do half an hour, a quarter of an hour chunks each day. I mean, obviously, if you, sometimes you have to miss. You can't help it. But if you break it down to smaller but manageable chunks, because you might say, oh, I'm going to do eight hours on Saturday. But then Saturday comes and things come up. So you don't even necessarily get that big chunk of time in anyway, do you? And it's really hard, actually, to to draw for eight hours yeah. because, you know, it takes a lot of focus, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm and not good at focus. No, and I think really an hour is is quite good going for drawing or an hour or two and then you need a break. So, yeah, it would be hard to, to actually, like you say, it's much better to do half an hour or 15 minutes or even 10 minutes a day than it is to try and just do it all in one lump you'll get yeah. much more out of it i think and at first it can be deflating and you might not want to practice because you don't think you're very good but you have to get through that part and just do it anyway and the more you practice drawing the better you'll become and the better you become the more you'll want to do it and it becomes something you know you look forward to doing rather than feeling as though you're setting yourself up for failure which is a hurdle i think beginners often can't get past um i know i remember that stage well it was years and years ago now but I, I remember just that feeling is like oh I don't want to ruin the page do you know what I mean you just have to go for it it doesn't matter it's just a bit of paper so I often liken it to going to the gym as I said earlier you know no, uh, you don't you know, go that, to the gym <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody likes going to the gym well only weird people like going to the gym and certainly for the first few weeks you know you work out you go home you look in the mirror and you think oh I'm still the same shape. Nothing's happened, you know, after one session. You know, there's there's no real pull for you to keep going because you just can't see anything changing. But, you know, the moment you start seeing a change, and I know this because, you know, I have phases where I do go to the gym <laughs> <laughs> and then I give up think, nah, I can't be bothered. But, you know, the moment you start seeing a change or a little muscle appearing where it wasn't before, you know, it gives that incentive. And the fact is, you know, that does happen if you keep going it definitely won't happen if you don't but you just have to you know get to that point where you start noticing something and then everything seems to fall into place and it becomes much more enjoyable and you start seeing a point to it you get that incentive that you need to do it so it's just getting through that first stage where you know until you just see that something happening where you're like oh oh yeah maybe I couldn't do that a few weeks ago you know but it does take a few weeks at least before you know you start feeling comfortable even with a pencil I think yeah do you know that's a really bad analogy when you just said I don't like going I give it up <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm not talking about I'm not <laughs> I'm not talking about art drawing I'm talking about the gym come on yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, so another thing is to go for quantity over to quality and not get too precious. And there's actually been studies done of this. And I may have shared this before, but there's a study, a study, a study, a study of a pottery teacher who split her class into two groups. She said she would mark one lot of kids for the quality of their best pot and the other set of kids for the number of pots they made. The kids who made the most pots were also the ones who had the best quality, purely oh, because they made so many. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it's funny, isn't it? Because normally the saying is quality over quantity. But yeah. you, where I think where this kind of thing is concerned, I think you're right. It is about doing it a lot. Yeah. It's about pencil miles, isn't it? Because if you make that one pot and you just labour and labour over it, you might, you know, each time you might be tweaking a little bit better. But if you had made in the, in the same sort of time 50 pots... Each one, theoretically, should have got slightly better. Have you ever made a pot? 
years ago. You did clay pottery, did you? Uh, yeah, I've done little courses when I was a kid and stuff, yeah. And you, you when you sort of lob the bit of clay on I was very on bad a, on the wheel. On a wheel. <laughs> yeah, very, very bad on the wheel. But I've also yeah. done, you know how you used to make the coil pots? So you'd make yeah. the coils and make them. Have you done that as well? No, I, I, no? I did do the spinny thing at school years and yeah. years ago. It's hard, but isn't it? it? It wasn't like, you know, it's funny. <laughs> do you remember the scene from Ghost? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like that. No. <laughs> There's no hot, hot man sitting behind you. No. 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 So, no, oh, no, that wasn't for me. <laughs> but anyway, by practising a specific subject rather than multiple different things, I think for a set period of time can be a good way to see your work improve more quickly. So you can build on what you learnt the previous day and you start to really get to know your subject. And eventually you should be able to start actually drawing that subject without even having any reference in front of you. But, you know, you don't have to do that indefinitely. If you get bored really easily, like Tara does, try it for a month and then switch it up a bit. And a great example of this would be Gabriella, who obviously did the daily self-portrait for a year. And as I said earlier, she used the challenges to to shake things up. But do you know what? I bet she could draw her face now with her eyes closed. And because she can draw her own face without any problem, I tell you what, she can draw any face. Yeah, I don't think I could look at myself that much. Oh, gosh, no. No. (laughs) I'd get get so bored of myself. (laughs) Yeah, there's a really excellent video. I don't know if you've seen this, Sandra, but it's called... The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Artists. Have you seen this? I I know there's a book called that, isn't there? I didn't know there was a video. Yeah, there's a video and it's by a guy, a uh, quite young guy, and he I think he's real, really good at a, an app. There's a bit of software called Blender that you can use to do 3D. But what he wanted to do was learn how to draw. And he'd always said, I'm going to learn how to draw, I'm going to learn how to draw. But of course, you say these things, don't you? And then you dabble for maybe a week or so. Yeah. And then and then it kind of tails off like we do with anything. You know, because, things... because you're not excellent at it straight away. Yeah, and because other things get in the way yeah. and you don't want it enough. Um, so he said what he decided was he would bet his young cousin $1,000 that he could get 100 likes on ArtStation, which I guess is some platform I don't really know about very well, within six months. And if he didn't get a thousand lights he would pay his cousin oh you said a hundred lights lights sorry a thousand lights no sorry a thousand lights on art station within six months and if he didn't he would pay his younger cousin a thousand dollars his cousin did have nothing to lose so there was nothing you know his cousin had to do um he'd he said he'd learned about loss aversion so once there's this thing in place like you do not want to lose a thousand dollars it really does set your mind to something Mm. so his his idea that he was going to learn to draw people and faces and he said initially he wasn't improving but then he suddenly remembered that there are general face proportions and he'd remembered them wrong so he started looking back learning and once he'd then got those cracked he said suddenly saw this vast improvement because sometimes you stick for a while and then you move on don't you yeah. So he said he'd been drawing for weeks, nothing was improving, and then he suddenly remembered he'd got he you know, he wasn't doing this right. So he looked them up, his faces got so, so much better. And I think once you know a subject well, you also gain so much more confidence. So, you know, he started drawing these things, they were getting better, and it kind of spurs you on then. And then you have less need for the reference. And the more like you say, you can put your own spin on it and take it out of your head. I, mean, I remember when I was a kid, I lived in America for a couple of years. And when I was about six or seven, there was this kid in my class. I remember his name was Wayne. <laughs> no, Wing. Wing, not Wayne. And, Wing? Uh, yeah, he was a, a little Chinese kid. Oh, right. And so it was like a Chinese name. I see, yeah. And uh, But he was the most amazing kid at drawing ever. But he could draw these cowboys on horses without anything in front of them he would just draw them at that age and i wish now i could go back and ask him how he did it whether he had a photographic memory or whether he just constantly drew cowboys from reference and then could just do it off by heart have you tried um finding him because with a name like wing you'd think he'd be mind you i suppose it depends how popular that name is yeah i can't remember what his last name is Oh, you might you might have to do some digging, see if you yeah. can get hold of him. <laughs> so, yeah, what you were saying earlier, though, about um, 
the guy who who kind of realised that he needed to go back and look at the face proportions. So it's a quite. I'm glad, I'm glad you actually brought that up because what I think is important is not just um, talking about drawing every day because if you gave a pencil to someone and said, okay, draw draw something every day and they weren't actively learning through, you know, researching things and looking things up and learning, then you're probably not going to improve very much, if at all. You might improve with your eye coordination and hand-eye coordination skills, but actually you, you do need to put some time into active learning as well. That might be watching videos or, you know, looking at drawing books. But yeah, active learning, that's a, that is a part of it. So I'm glad you touched on that. Yeah, I think that is actually one of the points because I say he's got these seven points and that thing is like you're not just kind of mindlessly, you know, when you can see that things aren't getting better, you don't just stick there. You think, now, why isn't it getting better? Yes. There's, there's probably a reason. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And when you've practised a lot at home, you'll feel more confident in venturing out with your sketchbook and drawing in public. And that's when you can start practising your moving subjects. And I know that when I've had a dry spell in my sketchbook, I definitely feel a lot less confident when I go outside. Um, I always need to feel like I've got a flow going on. And it's such a a really lovely feeling when you open your sketchbook and you just can't wait to put pen to paper and you're pretty sure that the drawing's going to come out okay and it does take time to get to that point but when it happens oh it's brilliant and and it will happen in time if you keep practicing I mean I remember going to was it where were we We were at Brighton first time we we went out sketching oh no it was probably when we went to London the first time or the second time and I remember just being I just could not wait to get my pen out and put it on the paper and you know I'd been sketching a lot um Then there's other times when we go out where I've had a few weeks where I just haven't had time and it it feels suddenly I open the book and think, oh, I I just can't, I haven't got a flow going, you know. It makes such a difference when you've been doing it every day. You know, it's almost like you takes the fear away because you're you're doing it every day anyway, so you're just doing it in a different place. Yeah, but I think as well, I think you do get these points where you don't feel like you're improving, don't you? You, Oh, yeah. Because I can sit at a certain level and think, oh, you know why it say so I'm trying watercolor like why aren't they getting better you know I've done I've done five now I should at least be seeing a little bit of progress each time but they don't but then it might take till you get to your tenth one and then suddenly ah now it's you know hit a level better but I don't know why it takes those it's almost like it's not a steady incremental thing it's like a a, a sudden step which is it's accepting those those awful starts it's accepting those and carrying on that's the hard part isn't it yeah it's doing something and thinking oh that's awful and then getting back on the horse and doing it again because when you ride a horse and you fall off you really don't want to get back on but that's the whole thing you have to because that's the hardest part is is accepting failure it's not failure anyway it's it's just a lesson but it's, it's seeing it that way and it's yeah. weird, isn't it? That sometimes, you know, it really does feel like one step forward and three steps back because sometimes, you know, it feels like your art is getting worse rather than better. Have you had that before? Yeah, and I think sometimes it's because you don't know what works. So you're almost trying things out, aren't you? You think, oh, maybe, maybe I have to do this and that will work. Yeah. But no, that wasn't it. Yeah. I don't know, especially with when I was doing the watercolours, it was like, oh, maybe... If I make it a lot wetter, that's good. No, well, that didn't work. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe if it's a lot drier. No, that didn't work either. One of the classics is maybe if I buy the pen or the paintbrush that person on that video is is using, yeah. then that will make me all right. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that, does no, it? Like, it we've all done it. <laughs> and also, also, you can't always tell how much you've improved. You can obviously if you're doing like, you know, consecutive days like we're talking about, mm. but... If, for example, you are even even doing consecutive days, but you're doing it in a sketchbook, if you look back then for like a year ago in an old sketchbook, it will be amazing how much you've changed. I, I was looking back a little while ago at some of the terrible ones that I did. I think a first challenge I did when we set up Kicking the Crazies was Art Journal January. Oh, yes. And I hadn't been drawn by hand that much um, 
before that really i dabbled a little bit yeah and, oh my god they are so bad <laughs> they they were. Were, they're shocking <laughs> but but, but, it but felt you really... look back you, you're looking at the time yeah did you think they were shocking then i probably didn't think they were great but i probably thought they were better than they are, i do think now and it's because you've improved so you yeah can, you've got a, a you know you, a new sense of what you can and can't do so back then you thought oh that's not too bad actually i mean it's not great but it's it's not too bad yeah. whereas now you're looking back and thinking oh that's horrendous and that's just you know often you don't even know you have improved like you say until you look back and also i years. look at people on instagram say and obviously there's people who i think are phenomenal on instagram mm, yeah. but also i'll look at people who who maybe two years ago was a complete awe of yeah. and and I'll look at them now and I, it's not that I, that I don't think they're really good but I d- no longer think it's not attainable if that yeah. makes sense yeah it's like oh okay I can see how you can do that yeah you're not as you're not as far away now as you were before if that makes yeah. sense oh it totally makes sense yeah I mean we've all got we've all had sort of that feeling where you go online and you sort of look at something and think, oh, I really want to be able to do that. And, oh, how on earth? And that's never going to happen. But it it can happen. It's just patience. Um, it's persistence. It's determination. Um, it's being willing to be bad for some time. And sheer stubbornness, maybe. I mean, I do think you need a want for it. Don't yeah, you? You, you do. need a want. It's not just about. See, it's all very well practicing, but if if you if you want it bad enough, you will. But I think people who kind of just lose that momentum is because perhaps they don't want it enough. So when I've sketched regularly over a long period of time, it starts to feel completely effortless to start. Like I just know what I'm doing, and there's no fear of fear barrier holding me back. And with that, I think comes confidence. And then the more confidence you start with the better the end result because there's just no hesitance so your sketch has that sort of more of an energetic feel and I notice such a huge difference when I haven't drawn for a while even after just a few weeks like the pencil just starts to feel like it doesn't belong anymore and it just takes a while to get back into the flow so I do think it is a case of use it or lose it once you've got the skills you still need to keep them up I mean we were talking about we keep referring to beginners don't we but actually even as established artists you you still have to keep it up you know it's not I don't think it's necessarily like riding a bike do you yeah I do think it's like riding a bike but I think it's it's like you almost need to rebalance yourself so it's going to come back quicker than if you hadn't done it before in the past yes so, but it still takes time like for example I hadn't drawn a lot like I said before by hand for a few years you know I drawn a bit of digital stuff but that first time when we did our silly challenge and I drew um a Prosecco bottle yeah it just it felt odd it felt I didn't know how to position it I couldn't really remember how to shade it how to sort of make it look level because when you're doing stuff digitally or you can change it you can just keep drawing over the top of it squeezing it Actually, undo yeah undo and do you know what? i did that on my paper the other day i was i was <laughs> doing a doodle thing you know the doodle challenge yeah yeah and i just done a really loose doodle in pencil and i was going over it with ink and uh, i thought i can't see that bit very well and i got my fingers and i did that thing like you do on your ipad what you rubbed it you know, out your- <laughs> you know you're trying to make it bigger <laughs> you did i did oh I, thought, I, thought, I can't see it very well <laughs> <laughs> anyway i forgot what i was saying now i don't know but you know imagine if life had an undo button wouldn't oh, it be great yeah it would yeah, would, you, would, you, would um would you ever have asked me on your podcast <laughs> no i'm sure i wouldn't <laughs> would you have pressed the undo button <laughs> no, probably <laughs> Your workload has like tripled, quadrupled oh, since so we met. Yours. Well, yeah, I'll that's bet, true. Yeah, I bet you think, oh God, why did I ever do that? <laughs> Not at all. No. Not at all. So where were we? I don't oh, know where we were. We, we were talking about alien pencils. So, oh yes. Yeah. So so my so my pencil definitely did feel alien too, and I think that's a really good way of talking about it. Is the alien thing, isn't it? It's that 
it's just not feeling right and not feeling comfortable doing something it's not natural and that's what I think happens when you have that big break from something it's it becomes not natural again and it takes a while to get back into that thing which is probably why the continuous thing works better because it it feels natural each time you're not you're not almost getting those interruptions. It's like when you do a bit of work. You know when you're, you're trying to do something, uh, like write something or do accounts or whatever, you keep yeah. getting phone calls. Mm. You get phone call, but then it will take you 15 minutes to work out what you were doing before. And that's almost like what you're doing when you have big breaks in between your drawing, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, how, how many times have you heard people say, oh, I wish I'd kept it up? Well, you just That's start another... again now, don't you? Yeah, but people say it a lot, don't they? Yeah. I hear it all the time. I wish I'd kept it up. Oh, I love your art. I used to draw. I wish I'd kept it up. Well, you know, obviously, like you say, doesn't matter. Pick it up again. Yeah. But for the people that are, uh, you know, drawing and sort of getting out of the habit a bit, don't be one of the people who are saying, I wish I'd kept it up, because you can keep it up. It's just... I think time management is is often an issue, isn't it? We've done an episode on time ma- management as well. Re- in fact, I think we did a couple, and I think they were quite useful. Um, so anyone who's listening who finds that to be an issue with getting a creative habit, then you might want to go back and have a listen. I don't know what episodes they were, but you'll find them on on the list of podcasts. I mean, I often, I often think, I think the same, actually. Sometimes I think, I wish I'd kept on drawing, because then... I would be way better than I am now. It's like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. But you, I think you're so much better than you actually think you are. <laughs> I, I, I really do. And I think with you, you you just have so many different um, approaches to things. And I think it always makes your work really quirky and interesting. But what is interesting is that despite the different styles, you keep saying, I'm trying to find my style. I could always tell between i could tell exactly what's yours every single time it's like your doodles you're doing now the black and white ones yeah i mean i was i was just because i've only been back four days i haven't really had time to sort of catch up on the group or anything like that but i did spot straight away one you'd recently put on and i loved it but you were doing a while ago you were doing those kind of orange abstract faces weren't you yeah you can tell the same person's done it can you? I, oh, I, see, 100%. I don't want on style. We're going back into style now. We, we are. Still I know it's not, it's not an episode yeah. on style, but you have already got a style. You just are blind to it. No, I, I think it depends how you define style, you see. Yeah. Because I, I define style as... So So if we look at... Take you. Yeah. I'd, your style is to paint reflective things in oils, and they tend to be still lifes. Yeah. Include a lot of glass. Yeah. Yeah. And they're either that very white style or very... See, I'd call those two styles or a dark style. Mm. Mm. Whereas you'd probably just say you've got one style, but I'd call those two different styles. Yeah. Even though really they're both yours and you can tell they're yours. Yeah, I, for me, a style is telling who's... Being able to tell straight away who's drawn it or painted it. Yeah, that's not, not necessarily. So much. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. we can't we can't go no, on to style. We We're not talking about style no, because that <laughs> might be a little challenge that I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, like we say, the key is just consistency. Getting past that first, you know, few weeks of not being able to do it, and you will see the benefits. You can't not if you put the time in. Shall we read out the answers to our previous question? Yeah. And the previous question was, what is your favourite colour and how will you describe it to a blind person? Now, I thought nobody's going to answer this one because what a weird question, Sandra. I know. I, I wrote that question and Tara said, oh, I don't know about that question. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure you want to ask that? I don't think anyone's going to answer that question. But it was funny because I really, I found it a really interesting question and I really wanted to hear the answers. And actually... Loads of people answered, yeah, they didn't did. They? <laughs> Actually, you someone see? someone shared a video uh, which was re- I don't know if you went and watched it. You probably haven't had a chance to catch up on that. No, but um, she actually shared a video where a guy who is blind himself went round a conference or, or something and asked different people, "How would you describe blue to me? How would you describe green to me?" And it was really interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Oh, no, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Yeah. But it just goes to show that you should always listen to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had DMS art. Purple, a calm and cool colour partnered with passion and warmth. It has the scent of lavender and echoes royalty and grace. I do like purple. I'd definitely say royalty as well. Apparently, if you have a purple front door, yeah. it means you're a creative person. I haven't got a purple front door, have you? No, I haven't. Got a I've white got, one. No, I've got a wooden one. Yeah, plastic one. Right, Monsters, Mess and Mud. And she says, Burgundy. It's like the taste of cinnamon to warm your taste buds on a cold day. And I have got Creations by Nia Shop. Blue, the sound of the ocean, the sound of the rain, the sound of the wind. I've got Briella Arts, turquoise, like a cold lake in the mountains or the Caribbean Sea, refreshing colour. And I've got Sarah Ballius, green, the taste of crisp, slightly tart fruits and vegetables, the sound of exotic birds, the smell of the forest, the feeling of luck and mirth. Then I've got Bourbon Till and yellow. Yellow is the feel of dandelion flower petals that you gently touch to your lip. So poetic. Isn't it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Jewel Mulder, she says, at the moment, my favourite is yellow. Yellow is warm, feeling like a summer day. And when you feel happy, it's yellow too. I've got Teresa Lycan and she says, I love red. It's passion, like being kissed for the first time by someone you're attracted to. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Cheryl Martin, for me, it's yellow. Yellow is the smell of warmth that ripples around you. It's bright and beautiful and has tones of all seasons. It feels like a magical dream where you're surrounded by it. Do you know, when I first read that, I thought, yellow is the smell of warmth and nipples. And I thought, nipples. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, now I'm looking at that word, glancing at it. It's just, <laughs> the R and the I are really close yeah, together, they are. aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, shouldn't that be red nipples? <laughs> Right. That's so funny. <laughs> I've got Midge Mazina. Blue. It is the colour of the sky and the ocean and can describe a feeling of melancholy. It is a colour that can be cool and warm depending on your emotions. Colleen Beers. I love orange. I'd say it feels like the warmth of sun on a summer's evening. It's the feeling of deep, genuine joy. The warm glow of a fire on a dark winter's evening. And I've got art by Jackie P. It's red, sexy colour. But my <laughs> description for a blind person would be censored. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking nipples, isn't she? she? She had another one. She says, on a slightly more serious note and avoiding red, at the moment I love cyan blue and light green together with which remind me of seaside summer days. Cool, refreshing, you feel like you could drink it all up. I've got Nicola Robertson. And she says, orange. Orange at the moment. It feels warm, but not as hot as sunlight. It is comforting, like the smell of hot bread. It is a happy colour, but grounded. Smells a little earthy. I've got mini Techman. Blue. Blue can feel electrical and tingly on your tongue and tastes like fizzy sweets made of blueberries if it's bright. If it's dark blue, it feels like you're stretching your arms in front of you, but there's nothing to touch as you walk around. And if you put your hands on the floor, the ground moves away from you. It tastes like coldness of nighttime. Baby blue is the sound of birds in spring and smells of talcum powder. It feels soft and not too cold, but not too warm either. How poetic is that one? So, some of these answers are so interesting, actually, aren't they? I mean, yeah. like the, the putting your hands on the floor and the ground moves away. Yeah. It's really interesting how people are thinking about this question see? i'll be rubbish at this i know i'll see? be rubbish <laughs> no all right <laughs> right yeah but we know what happens sometimes when we leave you to the question we, we have what is the most creative thing you can do with a pencil don't we <laughs> <laughs> oh don't 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 i love that one <laughs> right then we've got joanne hannah green like the smell of cut grass the taste of fresh herbs and the smell of soft moss I've got Hilary Milner. Purple is my favourite colour. It's like the sumptuous feeling of velvet with a deep pile. Deep pile reminds me of those shag pile carpets. Do you remember oh, them? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, Aren't I just... they back in now? Oh, I don't know. Got... You used to rake them, didn't you? <laughs> well, I've got a rug in my lounge that I think is sort of shag pile. How nice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Margaret Gray, I've got, I love many colours. Since my dog is blind, I would describe the colour to her as this. Red is warm like a hug. Blue is cool air and the water in a dish. Green is the grass of spring and summer. Yellow is the sun on your face and brown is the earthy smells out in the yard. White is the snow and ice that covers up everything, clean and cold. Oh, that's so sweet. But would she understand you, though, if she's a dog? <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to describe mine as, like, brown is a biscuit. Red <laughs> yeah. is a steak. It'll be food. <laughs> Mumsy Savo, orange, a deep sensation of falling into warmth. Yeah, really interesting answers, I think, for that yeah, question. Yeah, thank you for those. Yeah, yeah. And we have got a new question for you, which is, what are your creative goals for 2020? So what are your creative goals for 2020? And Tara, I'm going to ask you, what is your creative goal for 2020? Um, You really should be prepared for this Yes, I do know what my creative goals are. So my creative goals are to find my style of which I'm probably doing a little experiment in February that we'll talk about a little bit on the next podcast. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Get rid of me. (laughs) Yeah, find myself a new, nicer sidekick. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What else? Um, Oh, and I I, kind of... Yeah, I'd like to sell a bit of art, I think. I'd like us to do some interesting things for Kicking the Creatives. Is this too many goals? Um. You know um, what you've got to do when you have a goal, don't you? What? You have Narrow to write it down them to one. Down. No, you oh. have to write them down and put them somewhere where you see them all the time because apparently that gives you a lot more chance of, of achieving them. But then I read something else to say that was actually a false experiment, so I don't know if it is true. <laughs> oh, that's helpful. <laughs> but I also want to do some more, I think I want to do some more online courses just, just to try and get some different ideas and thoughts flowing in my head. Yeah. 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 How about you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my creative goals, like you, I think. I think I've got. <laughs> no, I've got. I've, I don't think I've, I would be able to get one that would be able to put up with me. To be honest, no. And maybe I don't not. think I don't think you would either. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I think a lot of the goals are related to kicking the creatives i mean i would like perhaps to have another exhibition as well of my paintings can you Um, believe you're saying that after how much anguish you went through my problem is getting enough paintings done it might be that i have to wait another year it might be that i have to it's hard isn't it because if a painting if you do a painting to do an exhibition, in a way, you need to almost say work on hold, work on hold, work on hold, because you're on hold for exhibition. But, of course, if someone wants to buy a painting, it's very hard to turn that down. Yeah. Because you, we have to make we have to make a living, do you know what I mean? You've got to make some money. Well, and also the, the idea of the exhibition part of it is to sell your work. And if someone it, offers exactly. you to buy it, yeah. Exactly, but you you can't say I'm having an exhibition. Come and see my work, and there's five paintings hanging on yeah. the wall. You know, so you you really need to have. I I know I did it with my friend, and it's just as well because between us we had the perfect amount, but there wasn't enough for her to exhi- exhibit on her own, and there wasn't enough for me to exhibit on my own, and it's simply because paintings sell, which is great, but I I would love to get the time to paint more. I think. Um, but it's always difficult. That's always been an issue. It's, it's all about time, isn't it? But yeah, kicking the creatives. We've got plans for, haven't we? We've got lots yeah, of goals. Have. And that's um, equally as important to me. So I don't know. Let's see. I wonder what will happen. Let's see. Yeah. Anyway, you can tweet us your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I suggest you do. We'll also put the question up there and on the Facebook page and, of course, on Instagram, which is Kick in the Creatives. And don't forget to pop over to our website at www.kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And, of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you are enjoying the podcast, we would be so grateful if you would leave us a little review on iTunes or even just a star rating if you don't have much time. And, of course, do share, do share the episodes as well if you can. 
Yeah, and don't forget to check out and subscribe to YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel where we have videos that we post quite regularly. So if you want to laugh and to learn a bit about art, go and check those out as well. And don't forget, if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support us here at Kick in the Creatives, you can do so by buying us a coffee. And you can find a link to Kofi on our website. So that's, that's it. That's we remarkably s- quick for us, you know. I know. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be because I literally only had a very short time to write notes because of the time I've been back from holiday. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been waffling on like a lunatic like I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we will see you next time. Yep. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. what you were saying earlier about um uh oh god i've forgotten <laughs> i told you i'd get i told you i'd get like oh no hang on i had a really important thing to okay. say oh my goodness it's gone